Hello everybody, today I would like to talk to you about human population growth. I will focus mainly on current rates of population growth, but I also want to look at the history of human population growth, and I want to look at future predictions of what will happen to human population growth. First, for most of the 20th century, the world was in the exponential phase of population growth, and we're going to see a graph on that very soon. Um, there are recent indications that population growth will stabilize in the, in the relatively near future, and we're going to see that coming up, and we're going to talk about those predictions later. Population growth over the last hundred years is not due to an increase in birth rate, interestingly enough, but rather due to a decrease in death rates. And so it's interesting to ask why have these death rates decreased? And just as a quick aside on that, it's largely been through the advances of healthcare, control of infectious diseases, especially through sanitation systems, which have made drinking water much safer, as well as due to vaccines and antibiotics, so medical technological advances, as well as generally better health care for more people. And it's also due to better nutrition, and um, some people claim that's due to better agriculture, which may in part be true, and uh, other people claim it's due to escape from colonialism, and I think that's also partly true. Uh, those are probably interesting topics to explore for your PhD or your undergraduate thesis. And other people think it has to do with the whole rise of global trade and the concentration of human settlements, which means people are more likely to become educated and to be, have access to health care, etc. So those are just some of the ideas about why the death rate has dropped. Now, here is a picture of the human population from two and a half million years ago or so to the present. And you can see the, the x-axis is strangely warped in, 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 at a couple of places, the far left hand and the far right hand end. And you can see that for most of time, the human population was very low, well, well, well under a billion people. And we'll take a look at that uh, in more detail in a little bit. And you can see that the plague resulted in a big downward blip, although I don't think it really that humans were ever in danger of going extinct. And then with the Industrial Revolution, we have entered this incredible increase in growth rate and this exponential growth rate, where you can see just how quickly we've gone from under a billion to now where we are, which is over 7 billion. And the dotted lines in this graph, graph are predictions of where the population may level off. This graph was made about 2005 or 6 or something like that. And you can see some people thought it would level off. Most optimistic scenario was under 8 billion. And we are now about 7.5 billion. So we're getting close to that one. That doesn't look like it's going to happen. And other people said around 10 billion. So we'll talk about that more in a few minutes. It's believed that at the dawn of agriculture, which is about 10,000 years before present, there are about 5 million human beings on Earth. Don't ask me how anthropologists have come up with that number. I don't know, but that's the generally accepted number. By 1927, we reached 2 billion. And in 47 years, that doubled to 4 billion. That is, in 1974, we had a doubling. And then we got another 2 billion people added in 25 years. And 8 billion is predicted to be three years from now in 2023 which will show you that the doubling time is increasing a little bit from 47 to 49 years. What I said at the bottom is that the inertia of our population size will mean that we continue to have big gains in population, even if fertility goes down, which it is showing signs of doing. So I'll explain that as we go on. Here is another population timeline. You should stop the video and take a look at this and just uh, see what you can see here. Some interesting things. At any rate, let's move on. There's a lot of variation in the predictions of future population. And we're going to see this in the next slide. Why is this? Well, it has to do with assumptions, really. Demographers, the people who, who make these predictions, uh, have to determine how reliable current estimates are, how reliable the databases they use are, and look at the assumptions made in these and see if they think they're real. And then they have to make assumptions about future fertility trends. And of course, we don't know what future fertility is going to, to be. And therefore, it makes this a very dicey business. But here are the predictions for the future. And you can see here are five models, three from the UN. The red, the gold, and the green are from the UN. 
And the first one is using a high fertility prediction for the future. And the second one is using a medium fertility. And the last one's using a low fertility. And then there's the U.S. Census Bureau, which is a, predicts the highest population by 2050. And then there's the IIASA 2007 prediction. And I can't remember who the IIASA is. They had a pretty low prediction. So we'll talk more about this, but I wanted you to see that all the models show the population leveling off. Current human population growth is very unevenly distributed. Well, what I mean by that is that the population in developing countries is increasing nine times faster than in developed countries. So it's increasing at a much higher rate. By 2050, it's predicted that 95% of the world's population growth will be in developing countries, and we will be somewhere between 7.8 and 10.8 billion people. About 1% of the total growth each year occurs in developed countries, the rest in middle and low income countries. And these discrepancies that you see here are due to different definitions from different statisticians of what a developed country is versus a developing, or if you have high, middle, and low income countries. So some of the countries considered developed in this would be considered mid middle income in this statistic here. And here this is shown in a graph. And you can see that the growth rate, the number of people in billions who are growing, it's mainly occurring in the less developed countries. And the population growth rate has either leveled off already or is going to be highly stable in the next 30 years in developed countries. The five most populous countries in 2010 were China, India, the United States, Indonesia, and Brazil. And the predictions for 2050 are India to overtake China, the United States still in third place, Pakistan to overtake Indonesia, and Indonesia to be in fifth place. Brazil is currently... Uh, shrinking, I believe, or if it's not, it's very close to zero population growth, which is itself an amazing story. However, Brazil continues to be very poor, and as we're going to see later, poverty and high fertility go hand in hand. When we look at developed versus developing nations, and for the rest of this unit, we're going to look at several demographic statistics, and I just wanted to show you some of them to get you the idea of them right now. And these are going to allow us to characterize population growth and health. And we'll see that these things are correlated. The more healthy a country is, the less its population growth tends to be. The more education there is, the less its population growth. The more economic opportunity, the less its population growth, et cetera, et cetera. So one thing that we can look at is fertility rate. We're going to do a worksheet on this. We're going to talk about this. You can think of it right now as the number of children an average woman will have in our lifetime. That's not strictly speaking correct but that's the good first approximation. Infant mortality rates, and once again, countries with low infant mortality rates have lower birth rates. And you can see the less developed countries with very high infant mortality rates compared to the infant mortality rates in a developed country. Life expectancy, once again, higher life expectancy, lower birth rate. Per capita income is another indicator that tells us something about the general well-being and percentage of women using contraception or modern contraception. So those are some of the indicators. Uh, some statistics directly examine population growth rate, like fertility rate, and others are just more indicators of general health and well-being in the society. Population growth rates are finally slowing down in the globe, and in several developed countries, population growth rates are below replacement rate, so they are shrinking, notably places like Italy and other countries in Europe and Japan. This has not occurred in most underdeveloped countries, with China being the notable exception. Now you may ask, wait, all these countries are continued to have increased population. If their birth rate is below replacement, how can they continue to grow? And that is a mystery that will be cleared up in the Hans Rosling video. So we'll see why that is. And also in the next section on population age structure. It's very important for us to understand why developed countries have low birth rates, so we're going to study fertility theory. But birth rates are dropping in throughout the world, even in poorer countries, and we will also examine the reasons for this. Here is for the world from 1950 to 19, well, 2005 or so, the actual annual growth rate of the world. And you can see by the mid-60s it was up around 2%, but it has been falling pretty steadily since then. And it is now down to just a little bit over 1%. So that means births minus deaths 
is about 1% per year. Births are about 1% per capita greater than per year than deaths. Two questions to think of for this graph will help you understand it. Where in this graph will population levels start to decrease? So maybe pause the video, come up with your answer. Where on this graph will population levels start to decrease? And the answer is when the average annual global rate re reaches zero. And the second question is, if population is 8 billion and growth is 0.5%, how many babies are born in a year? Once again, stop the video, figure out what that answer is. Okay, you're back. It would be about 40 million babies a year, I believe. That's important because it shows you that with a high population, even a low annual growth rate will produce a lot of babies. So the population will continue to grow. Let's move on. We started to approach this question in class the other day, does the Earth have a carrying capacity for humans? And so far, Malthus has been wrong in his predictions. Oh! And why is that? So the main reason is because food production has outpaced population, and that's because we are a clever ape, us humans, and we have figured out technological ways to keep increasing the carrying capacity of the Earth. But what is important about that is that currently the Earth produces enough food to feed more than the number of people on Earth. And so current hunger is not caused by a lack of food. And it's not, in general, even caused by a local lack of food. It's not as if the United States is the breadbasket of the world and feeding everybody else through foreign aid. Every country regularly produces enough food to feed its population. Has this been done at the expense of natural capital degradation? Yes, absolutely, and we have to talk about that. But we should just point out that it is not population per se that has caused starvation and hunger. There are two commonly opposing views on carrying capacity that you will hear. And one says we have already exceeded it, and this is associated with environmentalists, and will continue to do so for some time, that we are borrowing from the future because we currently require 1.3 Earth's worth of resources, and by 2050 it's predicted that human beings will consume two Earth's, and if everyone lives at the current affluence of the United States, it would take five Earths. So we're just waiting for that time when the dieback will happen, so to speak, when we've exceeded carrying capacity. So that's one argument. The other argument is proposed mainly by economists, and it's as if these two groups have never talked to each other, and, and they don't. And they say more people is more economic growth. That's good. Technology will find answers to natural capital degradation, so we don't have to worry about population growth. We'll just let it, let it happen and deal with the technological issues. And I want to propose another view, a, a different view. I consider it sort of like the realist view. And that is that pollution is largely the result of choices in the type of technology we see today. These choices have been designed with the idea of maximizing profit for private individuals rather than with the public interest in mind. Carrying capacity is largely a, an irrelevant argument because it fails to recognize the environmental effect of the bad technologies we've employed. And so we really have to look at new ways that we can design society with the public interest in mind. We already saw this with the energy unit where we saw that there are technologies ready to go and take up a lot of the burden of providing energy for humans and therefore reduce greenhouse gas emissions significantly. In the next class, what we are going to talk about is the inertia of population growth, mainly that it's hard to stop population growth when you have a large population. It takes time. That's what I mean by the inertia. And we're going to do that by looking at the age structure of populations. Today, what I hope you understand is the history of human population growth, the current growth rates, that the current growth rates are slowing down, that there's still a lot of uncertainty about the future. After we look at age structure and see what that means, we'll look at fertility theory and we'll see what are the conditions necessary to permanently reduce human birth rates to below replacement level, which will sometime in the future create other problems that we'll have to deal with. So until next time, study hard.